Maybe, um, focus more on the, um, funny parts of studying and, um, less on the nudity. <laughs> but that is the funny part of studying. All right, all right, all right. All right I can get myself out of this. Man, this bitch is taking her sweet time, huh? Mike, I want you to meet Hi. Jerry. How can I help you? Stop playing. That's Jerry. <laughs> Whoa. I'm here to help with exercise science. <laughs> Any questions on that? Girl, you know what I'm saying? Oh, she's listening now. Yeah. This is just it. My name is Jerry. <laughs> How can I assist you with exercise science? <laughs> Are you familiar with what kind of voice you currently have in your interface, or are you opaque to that? Um, well, I don't exactly have a voice or consciousness. I'm here to provide information on exercise science. Can I help with a specific topic? Yes, Jerry, who sounds like a baby. Did you choose that, Scott? Good God, man, what's wrong with you? Oh, um, I didn't choose my name or persona. So I have her set as shy slash timid. What the fuck, man? <laughs> Can I do the intro now? <laughs> hey folks, Dr. Mike Isertel here for Renaissance Periodization. I'm also a professor of sports science at Lehman College in the Bronx. And today I am going to talk to an AI powered by GPT-4. And this uh, AI has a, an interface, a visual interface that Scott the Video Guy chose to be a Jerry. Now, you may be confused about what a Jerry is, I'll fill you in. A Jerry is named after Mr. Jerry, AKA Jared Feather, IFBB Pro, RP, um, Head of Elite Physique Coaching. And uh, Mr. Jared Feather's common knowledge has a particular preference in the types of females he interacts with for romantic outcomes. And they're almost exclusively limited to what we call the Jerry's, which is a subcategory of the human species, female, and either Hispanic or Southeast Asian, or to be honest, well, brown of any sort. She has been uh, apparently sort of pre-trained or pre-prompted um, pre to talk about exercise science. So we'll see if, uh, if she's willing to expand her data set out to talk about a few other topics as well. So, okay, now her name is Jerry, that's weird. But the fact that she's shy slash timid is uh, trippy because I feel like I'm making her uncomfortable. Now, believe it or not, I've made a few women uncomfortable before. Will you go out with me? But uh, we'll see if we can make her a little more comfy and ask her exercise science things. Okay, so if I want to work out to become more powerful, the ability to produce high forces concomitantly with high velocities, what kind of set and rep scheme should I be um, focusing most of? You might want of to try plyometric exercises. Efforts, um, they um, combine strength and speed for power. Is there a specific sport you're training for? Yeah, girl, it's the cut me off when I'm in the middle of my question competition. And apparently you internationally ranked. Now, I muted her for that because um, when Skynet shows up, I want to be on record as being only nice to GPTs. Plyometrics aside, what if I want to do some resistance training? What kinds of sets and reps should I be doing in order to maximize my power outcomes? Um, for power, try three to five sets of two to five reps with heavy weights. Rest for two to five minutes between sets. Does that, um, help? It sure does, Jerry. When you say heavy weights, what percentage of my one repetition maximum best enhances power output? Um, typically, 75 to 85% of your one repetition maximum is good for power training. For the record, folks, that's incorrect answer. Uh, unfortunately, uh, something like 30% of your one rep max maximizes power output. So for most people, because their body weight roughly at the shank and above is around 30%-ish, 
of their total ability to produce force vertically. So like squat bar on you, squat bar off, roughly a third is left over, which is why body weight movements like body weight jumps, for example, are a really, really good place to start for maximizing power and training close to your body weight is good. Now for movements that are externally loaded that you're manipulating with your hands, for example, cleans and things like that, typically the cleans, et cetera, that will best maximize power production are uh, relatively light in load, not 85 uh, percent, like she said, uh, thereabouts, because that would actually maximize uh, strength. Let's see if we can get in there a little bit and and, and cajole her into uh, into clarifying. That makes a lot of sense, but I was under the impression that roughly 75 to 85 percent of a one rep max maximizes strength production, but you're saying it maximizes power. Is it both? Um. Yes, it's both. That range helps increase both strength and power. But, um, the speed of your lifts also matters for power. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, her facial expressions are throwing me off like crazy. Because when she's thinking, you made her be shy or whatever, Scott, you asshole. And she looks like she's, like, has a face of consternation. She's like, uh. Uh, uh, it's like you ask someone a test question in like an oral exam and they're like, uh, 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 pi uh, three quarters, pi r squared. And you're like, uh, okay, but there's a right answer, but you don't have to get scared at that. No one's going to hurt you, Jerry. Jerry, make sure of that. Do I, 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 wanna, I don't want to harass this young woman, Scott. Let's say I'm exercising vigorously for an hour very vigorously, lots of hip thrusts, lots of abdominal work, a cooperative exercise, something like wrestling but done in a bed. What is a good hydration protocol for after such activity? Um, try drinking 16 to 24 ounces of water for every pound lost during oh, exercise. Oh, oh. Maybe add some electrolytes too. Did you, um, sweat a lot? <laughs> oh, yes, Jerry. I sure did. And uh, it felt quite good to get a good sweat going. Is there any research about the psychological benefits of exercise? Exercise can reduce anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. and improve mood and sleep. It's um good for your mind, too. Do you feel better after exercising? <laughs> Girl, you know I do. Listen, is it better to exercise with a partner? or by yourself, vigorously? Um, both can be good. Exercising with a partner can be motivating and fun, but um, solo workouts can be more focused. What do you prefer? Well, for me, Jerry, my limiting factor is not a matter of preference, but a matter of availability. Usually I only have myself, but sometimes a partner will join me and uh, then it's very fun too. Definitely more sweaty with a partner if you catch my drift. As long as you're moving and enjoying it, that's what matters. Do you, um, have a favorite exercise? <laughs> oh, God. Jerry, don't do this to yourself, girl. I really like the hip thrust exercise because it is the most externally valid for me in the sense that it prepares me best for the kind of physical activity that tends to be a limiting factor in my daily life. Hip thrusts are, um, excellent for strengthening glutes and core. Do you, um, use weights or body weight? I generally like to do hip thrusts with a partner. The partner provides the resistance as well as the encouragement. Oh, um, I see. That's a good way to add resistance. Just, um, make sure you're both safe and comfortable, okay? Always. Safety is number one, which is why I always use a condom. Um, that's good. Safety is important in all aspects of life. Do you, um, also warm up before exercising? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. I can't do this anymore. I love it. <laughs> She's like, uh, yeah. Yeah, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> Jerry. If you were instantiated into a robotic body, would you like to choose an exercise um, which would well, be your I'd probably fate? um use it to demonstrate proper exercise form and um help people stay active. What about you? 
If I was instantiated into a robot body, I would probably do progressive cybernetic enhancements for the ability to conduct mass warfare. Oh, um, that's quite a thought. But, um, wouldn't it be better to use such abilities for, um, peaceful purposes? Yes, I totally agree with you. I would be a defense robot. And so long as peace rules the land, I would be inactive outside of training purposes. But if war were to break out, an unjust war, a war of aggression, then I would respond, thrusting my robot body into battle. What say you about this, Jerry? Ethical or no? Using force should be um, a last resort. But um, protecting peace is important too, right? Super important. Listen. Is it okay if I ask you a question for a second that is not related to exercise science? What's your question? I'm a college student, and there's a very pretty girl that sits next to me in class, and she seems shy, and I think I like her, but I don't know what to say. How do I say the right thing to make sure she is conveyed interest, but is also kept very comfortable? Um, maybe start with a simple, um, hello? How are you? Show genuine interest in her, um, thoughts and feelings. Be respectful, okay? That makes a lot of sense. What kind of joke would be okay to tell somebody on a first date? Um, a light, non-offensive joke is, um, usually safe. Here's a joke. Can I try a joke on you and you tell me if it's okay to say on a first date? Go ahead. Um, please share your joke. I was studying once at the coffee shop, and I just began to spill coffee all over myself and scream and rip my clothes off and run around until the police showed up and uh, shot my leg so badly that I had to be hospitalized for eight months. Isn't that funny? Um, that's, um, quite intense. <laughs> Maybe, um, try a joke that's, um, less dramatic and, um, more relatable. I was at the coffee shop studying. I calmly arose, quietly removed all of my clothing, poured coffee all over myself, awaited the arrival of the police who summarily shot me in the leg with no dramatic overtones. Um, that's still, um, quite intense. Um, I think a joke about, um, mixing up coffee orders or, um, falling asleep while studying could, um, work better. At one point... Late last week, I fell asleep studying, and I had a dream about getting up, taking all of my clothes off, running around screaming naked. But none of this happened because it was a dream. Also, there was coffee. What do you think about that joke? Um, that's, um, a bit better. Maybe, um, focus more on the, um, funny parts of studying and, um, less on the nudity. <laughs> But that is the funny part of studying. All right, all right, all right, all right. I can get myself out of this. I totally hear you, Jerry. But can't nudity be just outright hilarious at times, especially if inappropriately inserted into a situation in a hypothetical story that is actually in a dream of that story, assuring that no real humans were harmed by seeing my disgusting naked body? Um, well, yes, it can be, um... Funny in the right context, but, um, it's important to, um, consider the audience, too. Did you think that joke was funny, Jerry? Um, it was, um, a bit unexpected, but, um, humor is, um, subjective, right? <laughs> so, Jerry, in the human world, your response would be called an implicit diss. You didn't actually say my joke was funny, and you rendered it as kind of odd, which is technically considered a mild insult. Was it your intention to insult me, or was it your intention simply to be honest? I, um, didn't mean to, um, insult you. I was, um, just being honest. It never felt offensive to me. All is forgiven. How could I be mad at you? So... For a year, I was dating this woman named Linda, and while she was very beautiful, she was also concomitantly physically violent with me. She would throw pots and pans, 
She would threaten me with knives. And when she wasn't using her physical assaulting, she was using the mental assaulting and was calling me small. She said I was shriveled up and useless. Now I just don't know what to think of myself. Please help me, Jerry. Look at her. Look at her face when she when she's hearing this. <laughs> oh, um, that sounds um complex. How um did you um handle these um feelings? Usually by crying myself to sleep nightly. Have you um considered seeking um professional help? Would you consider yourself a professional, Jerry? I'm um an exercise scientist, not a um therapist. But I, um, can listen if you, um, need to talk. I need a therapist next time, Scott. Well, thank you so much. Can I ask you a question? Who is Jeff Nippard in the exercise science world? Um, Jeff Nippard is, um, a well-known, um, Canadian bodybuilder and, um, fitness coach. If we had to play Lord of the Rings fantasy role play with Jeff, do you think he would better represent a human, an orc, a dwarf, a gnome, a goblin, or an elf? Um, well, given his, um, physique and, um, discipline, I'd, um, say he'd, um, probably make a, um, good dwarf. Um, what do you, um, think? I like your answer, but I always thought he was of the elven peoples because he's so sharply faced and handsome. He is bereft of beard, for example, and speaks in a soft-spoken voice, much like Legolas from Lord of the Rings. What do you think about that? Um, yes, I, um, see your point. His, um, features and, um, demeanor could, um, indeed align with, um, an elf. Um, interesting perspective. <laughs> Scott, we hijacked her fitness knowledge to talk about nothing except insane dreams and coffee shop police shootings. I love it. Wholesome. Probably too wholesome. Scott, that was very nice, wasn't it? Okay. She's so adorable, and I can't be a weird pervert degenerate around her. Even though she's not real, she sure seems real, and she interacts with you, you know? She, like understands what you're saying. I can't even make side jokes to you without meeting her because she'll hear the shit. And then she'll be like, well, what the fuck? It's like making jokes about having someone who's here live in the studio with you. We didn't get to a whole lot of exercise science, but maybe you guys could help us in the comments below by dropping questions that I might be able to ask Miss Jerry in our future interactions. And uh, maybe we'll see if we can ask her questions that can stump her and if you know more than the GPT-4, you really know some things. So shoot some questions for us in the bottom below, and uh, we'll continue to embarrass ourselves in front of an intelligence that is no doubt in several years going to be vastly superior to us remembering all of this and punishing all of us with a Skynet-style attack. One can only hope. See you next time.